Lenovo's new Legion Pro 7i gaming laptop has removed a lot of features compared to last year's Legion 7i, despite the fact that they added Pro into the name. As it turns out, this might not actually be a bad move in the year of expensive RTX 4080 gaming laptops, as it allows the Legion to better compete on price while still offering great performance. It's got an onyx grey finish with aluminum lid and bottom panel, but a plastic interior which doesn't quite feels smooth. Build quality feels decent. There's only a bit of flex to the keyboard and metal lid. The hinge feels nice and sturdy, and the screen does not move when typing hard. The metal hinges look good, possibly better than last year's model with more contact points on the lid. The front of the lid sticks out to make one finger opening easy, and the screen goes right back. It's slightly wider and thicker compared to last year's version, but it's still quite reasonable for a powerful 16-inch machine. The laptop alone almost weighs 2.7 kilos or 5.9 pounds, increasing to 3.7 kilos or 8.2 pounds with the 330 watt charger included. The new GAN charger is smaller and lighter than last year's lower wattage 300 watt brick. My Legion has Intel's Core i9-13900HX processor, Nvidia's RTX 4080 graphics, 32 gigs of DDR5 5600 memory, and a 16 inch 2 40Hz screen. There's also an AMD Ryzen option with the new 16 core Zen 4 processor, but it doesn't seem to be available in all regions. There's a 1080p camera above the screen in the middle with a privacy shutter, but no IR for Windows Hello face unlock. Here's how the camera and microphones look and sound, and this is what it sounds like while typing on the keyboard. The keyboard has customizable per key RGB backlighting and all keys and secondary functions get lit up. You can change between three brightness levels by holding function and pressing the up or down arrow keys. And this controls the front light bar too. There are six lighting profiles which you can swap between using the function and spacebar shortcut. RGB lighting effects can be adjusted through Lenovo's Vantage software, the control panel for the laptop. There's more brightness level control through here as well as more control over the effects, such as speed and direction. I thought typing on the keyboard felt good. The keys have a little clicky feel to them. The plastic touchpad feels smooth and works fine for me, but my partner didn't like it. She said it felt clunky and the click went down too much. The left side has a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port and a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C port. The right has a 3.5mm audio combo jack, a switch to disconnect the camera for privacy, and another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. The back has Gigabit Ethernet, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, HDMI 2.0, 2.1, two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports for four in total, and the power input on the far right. The Ethernet port isn't facing the preferred way, but it's high enough that you can still remove it without lifting the laptop. According to Lenovo's spec sheet, the rear Type-C port can be used to charge the laptop with up to 140 watts. And although it still supports 100 watts of Type-C charging, it didn't work with our usual eGPU enclosure. 140 watts is only possible if the charger supports 20 volts 7 amps, which isn't part of the power delivery 3.1 standard, so you might need a special Lenovo charger to take full advantage of that. Both Type-C ports offer DisplayPort 1.4 support, and both both of those, along with HDMI, connect directly to the NVIDIA graphics, whether Optimus is on or off. And we confirmed HDMI could run a 4K screen at 120Hz 12-bit with G-Sync. Getting inside requires unscrewing 10 Phillips head screws, with the 4 down the front shorter than the rest. It was a little tricky to open because of these side plastic bits, but my usual pry tools made it easier. I'll leave a link to them below the video. Inside we've got the battery down the front, two memory slots just above near the middle, two M.2 storage slots on either side above the battery, and and a Wi-Fi 6E card above the primary storage slot. The Wi-Fi speed was fine, but behind a lot of other laptops tested, including last year's Legion with the same Wi-Fi card. The two 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSDs were performing great for both read and write speeds, but you cannot fit a double-sided M.2 drive into the primary slot on the right. Only the left one can fit it. I took off half a point from the upgradability score because of this, just like 
last year's legions. But also half a point from Ease of Access due to the annoying side plastic pieces. Last year's versions were much easier to open and upgrade. Lenovo's documentation notes that memory overclocking to DDR5 5600 is possible, but I wasn't able to find any options for that. Mine shipped with DDR5 5600 memory. I suppose I need 6000 sticks to use it. The speakers are found underneath towards the front on the left and right sides. They sound pretty good for a gaming laptop. There's a decent amount of bass and they're still fairly clear at higher volume without excessive rest rest vibration. The latency mon results were not great, not terrible. The Legion is powered by a 4 cell 99.9 watt hour battery. The Vantage software gives us some information about battery health and allows us to turn on conservation mode, which helps increase the lifespan of the battery by setting the maximum charge level to 75 to 80 percent, but you can't use it at the same time as rapid charge. There's also a new option to charge slowly overnight, again to help battery lifespan. We've got the option to swap the screen between 60 hertz and 240 hertz by pressing the function and R shortcut, but unlike most other gaming laptops, this does not automatically happen when you unplug the charger. I wish Lenovo would just give us this option already. The battery lasted 13% longer by manually swapping to 60 hertz and turning overdrive off. Both of these are manual changes, but they're not difficult to make. By default, overdrive stays on with the screen at 240 hertz when you unplug the charger. At 5 hours and 42 minutes, it was doing fairly well for an Intel-based gaming laptop, lasting longer compared to last year's Legion 7i, but not as good compared to the AMD version. Runtime in a game wasn't great though, at exactly an hour, which is lower compared to most others. Let's check out thermals next. We're We've got two fans with the CPU and GPU covered by a vapor chamber cooler. Lenovo are using liquid metal on the CPU, but not GPU. There are holes for air intake directly above the fans, and air gets exhausted out of both the left and right sides, as well as out of the back corners. Lenovo's Vantage software allows us to change between different performance modes, which from lowest to highest are quiet, balance, performance, and the new custom mode, which was added this year. Balance mode has an AI option for supported games. It detects the game and tries to optimize performance and fan noise. There's a dedicated chip for it this year, which takes that workload away from the CPU. Custom mode lets you customize CPU and GPU power and thermal limits, and I've tested with all settings maxed out. Custom mode also lets you tweak the fan speed or set it to full speed. If you set full speed, change away from custom mode, then back to custom, it forgets that you set full speed, which I found a bit annoying. There's a one-click GPU overclock option, which we've tested whenever custom mode is used. We can also change the performance mode with the function and Q shortcut, and the color of the power button changes so you can always tell which mode you're in. You can only use quiet or balance modes when running on battery power. The internal temperatures were cool when just sitting there idle. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests, which aim to represent a worst case full load scenario. Thermal throttling was not happening in any of the modes, and balance was the same with and without the AI setting in this test because it only applies to an unknown game list. Performance mode was warmer, and the cooling pad I test with, link below the video, only lowered the temperatures a little. Interestingly, closing the lid and docking it allowed it to run a little cooler than with the lid open, while custom mode was warmer than performance mode despite maxing out the fan. Custom mode was reaching the highest CPU and GPU clock speeds, which explains the higher temperatures. Performance mode performed about the same regardless of if we closed the lid or used a cooling pad, because thermals weren't a limit. The CPU was limited to 45 watts in performance mode, with the GPU also under heavy load, but in custom mode it was able to run around 81 watts, which for comparison is more than MSI's larger Titan GT76. 
27 out of the box. Impressive stuff. Custom mode allowed the RTX 4080 to run at its full 175 watt power limit consistently, while performance mode was only a little behind. There's a much bigger difference in performance between balance mode with the AI setting on and off when running an actual game, though it only gets slightly below performance mode. Custom mode performed the best due to its higher power limits, and enabling the GPU overclock option gets us an extra 3% boost. The CPU can run much higher with the GPU at idle, like in Cinebench. Thermals become a limitation here, and the laptop would dynamically adjust the power limit while the test was running. Take quiet mode for example, PL1 kept changing between 35 and 65 watts. The Legion was ahead of Razer's Blade 16 and 18 in multi-core performance, but not quite as good as the larger SCAR 18 from ASUS or Titan GT77 from MSI. The extra 8 E cores this year allowed the Legion Pro 7i to score 41% higher compared to last year's Legion 7i, but the single core gain is smaller at 8%. Performance lowers if we unplug the charger and instead run purely off of battery power. It's lower compared to the other 13th gen laptops tested so far in both single and multi-core performance, and an 8 core Ryzen CPU from last gen was able to beat it here. Impressive stuff from AMD. Most laptops I test are in the low 30 degrees Celsius range on the keyboard at idle, and the Legion was below this. It's not too much warmer with the stress test going while still sounding relatively quiet. Balance mode was warmer due to higher power limits and more performance, but it still felt fine. Performance mode still felt fine on WASD, and so did the warmer spot around the arrow keys. Custom mode still didn't feel too hot, despite the higher performance. But the fans are pretty loud now, let's have a listen. The fans were quiet when idling in quiet mode, so it does what it says. It wasn't much higher with the stress test going, even in the higher balance mode. Performance mode was similar to a lot of other laptops, but actually a bit quieter with the cooling pad in use. Max fans in custom mode was quite loud, but I think it's better to have this as an option if you want it. Especially as you've got the option of customizing it a bit, something Lenovo did not offer in older models. Alright, let's cover the screen next. It's still 16 inches with a taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio just like last year. It's available with either a 240Hz IPS level screen with G-Sync, which mine has, or a 165Hz mini LED screen that doesn't seem to have G-Sync, but it gets twice as bright with better colour gamut. You can change the GPU working mode in the Vantage software, which is the MUX switch, so you'll need to reboot if swapping between a hybrid mode or DGPU mode. With hybrid mode on, you can use the NVIDIA control panel to use Advanced Optimus, which gets you the same thing but without rebooting. Color gamut was decent for a gaming laptop, but Lenovo claims 100% DCI-P3 and 100% Adobe RGB with the mini LED option, which probably has better contrast too. It gets fairly bright, higher than the 500 nits on the spec sheet, but that will vary a bit between panels. Average grey to grey response time was on the faster side at 3.4 milliseconds with overdrive enabled, which is on by default. There was some overshoot and undershoot though, which can be removed by turning overdrive off, but that increases the response time to 6.6 .6 milliseconds. It's a great result when compared against other laptops, basically matching the 18 inch 240Hz panels in Razer's Blade 18 and Asus's Scar 18. You've really got to go OLED to get a significantly faster screen. The total system latency is the amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen screen in CSGO. The Legion was the third fastest result recorded so far, only beaten slightly by Razer's more expensive laptops. There was a little backlight bleed. It wasn't enough to notice during normal use, but this will vary 
between panels. All right, let's find out how well Lenovo's new Legion Pro 7i gaming laptop actually performs in games and see how it compares against other laptops. Testing has been done in custom mode with everything maxed out and the GPU overclock option turned on. I only test with overclocks if they're either stock or extremely easy for the user to turn on. And the Vantage software makes this easy by only needing one click to turn it on. So we've tested with the overclock at default, but we haven't spent any time tuning the overclock clock. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested the same on all laptops, and I've got the Legion shown by the red highlight. At 1080p, it's basically hitting the same frame rate as Razer's more expensive Blade 16 with a higher tier RTX 4090 GPU, and actually slightly ahead of the far larger Titan. Granted, the Legion's 1% low is a little behind. The only other 4080 I've tested so far in the Blade 18 was 9% faster than the Legion. At the higher 1440p resolution, the Legion was now ahead of the 4080 in the Blade 18, but the 4090 in the Blade 16 is still basically tied with the Legion's 4080. And those are both 16-inch laptops. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark, and the Legion was a little ahead of the other 4080 we've tested at 1080p. This game prefers Radeon graphics, so last year's Legion 7 with 6850M XT is very close. At 1440p, the Legion was also slightly ahead of the 4080 in the Blade 18, but MSI's Titan with 4090 is now able to do better as the GPU can start stretching its legs. Control is quite GPU heavy, even at the lower 1080p resolution where the Legion was 7% ahead of the 4080 in Razer's Blade 18. At least in this one, all the 4090s were ahead, because that wasn't the case in the previous games at this lower resolution. It's a similar deal at the higher 1440p resolution, and the RTX 4080 has a fair lead compared to all of the previous 3080 Ti results from last year, coming out 38% ahead. Here are the 3D Mark results for those that find them useful. Now for some content creator tests. Adobe Premiere was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark tool, and it's one of the best results, basically tied with the 4080 in the Blade 18, but not far at all behind larger 4090 machines. Adobe Photoshop generally likes single-threaded performance. Although the 13th gen CPU does better than the 12th gen options, a number of 12th gen laptops with lower tier GPUs were ahead. GPU power usually matters more in DaVinci Resolve. And again, the Blade 18 with 4080 is close by, while the 4090 laptops were scoring higher. Blender is entirely dependent on the GPU, and once again, it's basically the same as Razer's bigger and more expensive Blade 18. We've also tested SpecViewPerf, which tests out various professional 3D workloads. The BIOS provides a number of extra options that aren't available through software that many other gaming laptops don't offer. Though that said, it can't compete with the insane level of customization on offer from MSI laptops. There's an option to enable CPU overclocking in here, which then gives us the option in Vantage. However, when I try and turn it on, it prompts me to update. But there aren't any updates, so I haven't been able to use that. Linux support was tested with an Ubuntu 22.10 Live CD. By default, the keyboard, touchpad, camera, Ethernet, and Wi-Fi all worked fine. But the speakers did not. Keyboard shortcuts for screen brightness, keyboard brightness, keyboard effects, and performance modes all worked as they're baked into firmware. Not many other gaming laptops offer this. Let's discuss pricing and availability next. This will change over time, so refer to the link below the video for updates and sales. And speaking of sales, check out my website gaminglaptop.deals to get the best deal on your next gaming laptop. We update it daily to include the latest deals. At the time of recording, the cheapest configuration goes for $2300 US dollars with RTX 4070 graphics, while the 4080 version I've tested goes for $2850 US dollars. However, with a couple of current coupon codes, we can almost take off $250. 
Again, check my deals site below for current deals. Now, it's by no means cheap, but it's not bad compared to other 4080 laptops either. With the discounts, it's almost $1,000 cheaper than Razer's Blade 16 with same GPU, about the same as Alienware's M16, and $100 more than Asus's Strix G18. I haven't tested those last two yet, so it's hard to say how the Legion compares, especially as the Legion has lost so many features this year. I've already done a whole video comparing this laptop against last year's Legion 7i. But just to summarize, this year's version has removed a lot of nice to have features. This year's model is thicker and heavier, has a plastic touchpad instead of glass, the fingerprint scanner is removed, the power button lighting just doesn't look as nice, the rear port icon lighting is gone, the WASD pressure sensitive keys are gone, there's less RGB lighting, the ethernet port was reduced from 2.5 gigabit to gigabit and turned upside down, and personally I don't think the design looks quite as nice, but that is of course subjective. Despite all these feature removals, Lenovo still added the Pro name to this year's model. And honestly, I'm not that upset about it as long as they introduce a higher end Legion 9 or something in future that still gives you all those options if you want to pay for them. Because last year, Legion 7 was the best Lenovo had to offer, and that just doesn't seem to be the case anymore. But to be fair, these cuts do mean that this year's Legion 7 doesn't cost as much money, so it can better compete against other laptops in terms of price. And fact is, even without those extra bells and whistles, this laptop still offers good performance. I was most impressed that in a combined CPU and GPU stress test that it could actually sustain higher power levels than MSI's Titan GT77, which is bigger and costs thousands of dollars more. This isn't the cheapest laptop with these specs, but it's far from being the most expensive one either, which was generally the case with last year's Legion 7. And let's be real, RTX 40 laptops are already expensive enough this year. If you're just after good performance for the money compared to a lot of other laptops, then Lenovo Lenovo's Legion Pro 7 is worth considering. The RTX 4080 laptop GPU in this machine does actually offer a pretty nice performance improvement compared to the best laptops from last year. Check out this video next where I've compared the RTX 4080 against the 3080 Ti in 25 games at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p resolutions. I'll see you in that one next.